Hello YouTube world, this is Logic Crazy and I'm Jonathan. Uh, we're going to have a final installment of these uh, consecutive uh, tutorials on graphics. Um, the tutorial after this will start focusing in on the engine itself. And we'll obviously later on have to tie in the engine with the graphics and so on. Um, but uh, this is the last uh, tutorial that focuses purely on graphics for a while anyway. Um, so what I would like to do is first show you one other uh, command that I forgot to show last time, and that is writing text on the screen. And so when we draw, we're going to do G dot, um, and you probably could guess this, uh, draw string. And so we'll put in, um, I'll just put in my name here, uh, or let's put in uh, uh, um, let's see, uh, yeah, sure, Jonathan, put in my name, and I'll leave it at X and Y. Now when I run this, you're going to notice that around follows me this word Jonathan. So that's a very basic on how to make Jonathan. I'm not going into how to change fonts and stuff. That's uh, uh, for yet another time. Um, it won't pertain very well to uh, this uh, chess engine. All right, now that I've shown you a little bit about writing text here and there, um, we're going to import uh, graphics, so an image, basically. And uh, the way we would do that is uh, first we need to have an image. So if you download in the link below that uh, um, the files that I have, which uh, contain all this text, all the text of your uh, other uh, file, the alphabet chess.java, and there will also be a picture, and it will look something like, let me just open this up here. It will be, um, it will be an image, and uh, you want it in this. It'll be uh, chesspieces.png. If you open the, it up, it should look something like this. It should have a bunch of chess pieces, uh, both blacks and whites pieces, and you want to uh, place that in the folder where uh, your uh, um, tutorials are, where your uh, files are. So generally, by default, um, when you've saved uh, this, uh, these two files, alphabetchess.java and userinterface.java, you are storing them in uh, uh, my documents slash netbeanprojects slash, slash uh, script, or CR, SRC um, is where both of these files are. And so if you edit these, they're identical to uh, what's in the... Um, NetBeans. And, but you don't want to put the image here. You want to put it in this root folder, which contains a bunch of other stuff. Write it within the chess tutorial folder in my case. Um, and as you can see, the folder hierarchy is right here. Um, so we have uh, chess tutorial, and that's where you want to store it, in this folder, not in the folder where your .javas are. So once you have this folder in there, and you could rename it, but then you have to rename the code that we're about to write, that is step one. And step two is telling it, uh, the program, that this uh, image is there. So we'll first create an image. So we will write in uh, image, and then put in a space, and uh, we'll title this image, uh, in our case, uh, chess piece image is what we'll title it. Now um, that we've called in an image, we're going to put in g dot, uh, whoops, draw image. Pick the top one, and it automatically knows chess piece image, and we'll x, y, and leave it at this. This is what's supposed to call the command. Now when you run it, um, oh, we got an error here. Um, this. And what does it say is the error? Um, oh, it might not have been initialized. That is absolutely right. We have not told the image uh, where it is. Now, to do that, all right, um, I'm just going to copy this down, copy and paste it a little quicker. Um, what you want to basically do is write. Uh, chess piece image, whatever you had titled it here, equals new, 
and then put in image icon and in brackets the t name of the actual file. So, um, well, not there, um, but anyways, there's a chess piece is dot png. And we should actually make uh, all these plural since it's more than one image. All right, so we'll run this now. Uh, once you have typed in this line here, so it grabs that image, and let's see if it runs better. There we go. Wherever my mouse goes, there goes the image. And you'll notice there's transparency. Now, I did edit this from uh, the image that we will use for our chess engine. It's not quite the same. And the reason for that is, um, well, you've noticed, for one, there's transparency. There's an alpha thing. And so if you make an image which has transparency, uh, Java will respect that. But I've also, uh, you can't see, but um, here. If I click, it doesn't move around. Right within the white parts of, for instance, this king and the queen, I believe, um, I've made it partially transparent, a 50% or something, so that when I move over, you'll notice when I go over the purple, it sort of turns purple. You can, it can kind of see through it. And so I just wanted to show you that um, in this example, just because uh, you can see the added functionality that might occur there. All right. So. Um, now that you know how to create a basic image, that, can, that one image contained all our pieces. Now I want to show you a couple other things. Um, for instance, in this uh, image draw, I'd like to change some values here. Um, for one, I would like to change, uh, we can add some more commas. Um, we're going to set this to 100, comma, 100. Now, um, if you notice here, there's all sorts of different options that are all chess image and they show you exactly what these things mean. So the one we had picked was this one. And what it basically did was it said um, the image, um, the X and the Y location, and now the width and the height is what we have put in. Um, so we will now run this, and you will notice that the width and the height have been squished. It's been squished and uh, really squished width-wise. Um, to look like that, so you can adjust the image and uh, stretch and condense it. Um, you'll notice another one of these. Um, let's see. Uh, there's also adding a color option, which colorizes it. Um, but now we will jump into this one, and this is the more complicated one. And what it does is it provides a DX, and then there's the SX version, and SY. And um, D means the destination, and S means the source. So it'll say destination should be from this XY to this XY on the screen, and it should take it from this XY and this XY of the image. So it can grab only a portion of the image and display it in a portion of the screen. And that way you could just show uh, the king or the queen or something. So we're going to try exactly that. We're going to put in x, y, and then let's uh, put in, uh, that's uh, our, our uh, upper left corner of the destination. And then, of course, the next one would be uh, 64. In the image, each, uh, each uh, piece of the chessboard is about 64 pixels apart from each other. And so that's why I pick 64. And uh, x plus 64. So that the destination will be about the same size as the source. All right. We'll now add another one, and it will be 0. That's easy. And 0. So we're going to take it from the upper left-hand corner of the image. That's where 0, 0 is. And we will then have 64 oh, and 64. Now, um, seems like there's a little bit of an error. Sorry about the pause there. Now you'll see when I run around, it takes the uh, white king. Wherever I move around, white king. So I took a portion of the uh, image and I display it so you can have multiple images within the same massive image and just display a portion of that if uh, that is preferred. And of course, if you play around with the values, uh, let me just show you a little bit like this. Um, if we pick X and then X plus, uh, let's make it a little wider, 100, and then the next value. Uh, we won't change Y there. And then we'll put this as X. 
and that leave it as zero and then we can put in uh, x plus 100 and set this to 100. Now um, this is uh, an interesting value. You'll notice it doesn't matter the height. I've got rid of all the Y's if you look. There's no Y's. So it doesn't look at the height of your image. But here I am basically saying uh, the X and Y determine which part is uh, where it's visible. And it does change both parts, but it actually counters the movement that would have occurred and only makes a certain portion visible. So when I move around, it looks like I'm just making certain parts visible or not. So I could put a little box right around the revealed part and it would look like it's a little window that I'm sliding across to show the image that is behind the yellow paper or something like that. And anyways, so you can play around with these and uh, create images that way. And that is all for this tutorial. As I said, this is my last graphics, purely graphics tutorial. The next ones we will be starting uh, with uh, creating the engine, the thinking part itself. So I look forward to that. Until next time, enjoy Java.